Hey guys, it occurred to me that I went to college for like a year, and then I never told any stories of what happened there on my YouTube channel. Largely because I didn't really upload a lot that year, or since then. I'd planned to tell all those stories during summer vacation, but the thing is, summer of 2019, was it was a pretty insane time, man. I got sidetracked, so I figured I should tell some of those stories while I can still remember them and farm that free, juicy content. Although, I have to say, for this story, there, I don't think there was much risk of me forgetting it. But first, it's a pig. It's a plane. It's Technoplane! On sale now at U2s.com for $29.99 with free worldwide shipping. Also, it can actually fly! For legal reasons, that was a joke. The Technoplane will be on sale until they run out. Our last U2 sold out on the first weekend, so buy one while you can. And if you're a fan of free stuff, enter my Twitter giveaway! We're giving away one Technoplane every thousand retweets, and it ends a few hours after this upload. So hurry and make it while you can. Either way, links will be in the description. Back to the video. I'm gonna be real with you, I waited until the last possible moment to record this video, and now the server is completely exploding because there's 90,000 people online, so it's a bit of an L for Technoblade, but we're gonna try our best and see what happens. So anyways, in college, I didn't really go around announcing that I had a YouTube channel, you know, I, I didn't, it wasn't like a top secret, I wouldn't completely explode if people found out, but I didn't, I didn't go around telling people, hey guys, I'm a Minecraft YouTuber, look at me. But anyways, there was a, there was an English lecture where our professor was talking about the different routes to publishing and stuff, and someone asked him, Hey, Professor, how do you feel about uh, online publishing? Is that good? And he's like, Well, you know, I don't really know all that much about online publishing, but the internet is, you know, is clearly the future. I mean, for God's sake, there's even people out there that, that make a living playing video games, and I'm, you know, I'm sitting there in row three, just sweating, like, Oh, God. Oh, God, he's on to me. He knows. Get back here. All right. Oh, you're approaching me? You're approaching me? Get the heck out of here. Wait, I won? Oh, that's nice. That was pretty normal, though. That, that isn't the part that traumatized me. So fast forward, it's the end of the semester, and I have a B-plus in rhetoric, and I am, like, I am so very close to an A-minus, all right? I am, like, less than half a percent away, but there's only one assignment left before the grades are finalized and the semester is over. And it's a speech. We got to give a speech on, like, some social issue that isn't super well-known, but we care about. And yeah, I did my speech on uh, freedom of speech in the age of social media, basically the TLDR is, this is an incredible connection, the TLDR is that, you know, social media is kind of, kind of extremely important, people use it a lot, you're literally watching this on YouTube, please don't do this to me. You know what? I'm purling through. What are you gonna do about it? Basically, a company like Twitter could decide tomorrow, you know what we feel like doing today? We're just gonna start eating democratically elected world leaders that we don't like right off of our platform, and the only thing we could really do to stop them is go, no, please don't do that, because we don't have any freedom of speech protections there. Because, you know, it's, it's a private company, they, they can legally do what they want. That's just what the speech was on. I'm not trying to start a debate in the comment section, because then I'm gonna hear the same 500 counter-arguments that I addressed in my speech and you guys didn't hear it. What are you doing? What is your plan here? So I'm sitting here brainstorming, like, how can I get a good grade on this speech? Because I need that A minus, man. My dignity will not allow a B plus. And then I think to myself, I've got it. I'm going to use ethos. I'm going to establish a, a personal connection between myself and the topic. And it's going to be incredible. He's going to instantly hand me an A plus. So I figured I'll mention. So I begin my speech. And I have to begin by, you know, pointing out how important social media is. And I figure I'm going to do that by referencing my, my YouTube channel. But I'm, I'm going to be discreet about it. You know, I'm just going to say, like, oh, you know, you know, social media is, is so important in our lives. And it's, you know, it's really revolutionized communication. Like uh, the other uh, few weeks ago, I uploaded a commentary onto the Internet. And now 90,000 people have seen it. And, you know, prior to 15 years ago, that at any point in history, that would have been unheard of, and today, it's like, yeah, that's kind of common, you know, it's, it's not that impressive. Weird flex, but okay, man. Oh, that guy came out of nowhere. He hit me with one egg. That, that was so many wasted eggs, dude. We're in a pandemic. You can't just be wasting food. So yeah, you know, I just casually throw in that reference to my YouTube channel, and then I do my speech, and it is a fantastic speech for the record. All right, one second. One second, one second. Sir, please calm down. Please calm down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. To give you guys some context, this class was about, I'd say about 15 people large, and it lasts for about an hour. So we'd have a few speeches each day, and then we'd field some time for questions. And then we'd just go home. We'd just end class early, because that's something you can do in college if you get done with the content sometimes, because they're not, I mean, in high school, they're legally responsible for you, so they can't just, they can't just send you away. But in college, they're like, okay, bye. We're done here. So yeah, I get done telling the greatest speech ever told, and then I'm answering some questions from the class, and of course, the, uh, some guy in the class says, so you have a YouTube channel. What's your YouTube channel name? And I'm like, oh, you know, it's Technoblade, and instantly I hear someone go like, da 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 Guys, I found him. I found him. He has 500k subs. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. 
God. And one of them, one of them says as a joke to the, to the instructor, like, hey, we should watch one of his videos in class. And I'm like, ha ha, ha ha, yeah, man, yeah. And then the instructor goes, oh yeah, sure, a after this last speech. I'm like, hey, hey, instructor, you, you've doomed me. You were supposed to protect me, instructor. Where did this man come from? It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter, because he's gone now. He's gone. He can't hurt me anymore. And neither can this man. Nope. I'm sitting like this. This is a sick prank. No. Why? And so the last person gives their speech, and they're like, "All right, pull up one of your videos on the old, on the old, uh, what do you call them? The video board thing. It's like a whiteboard, but it's uh, the projector. Yes, I'm intelligent. This is why. This is why I dropped out. Leave me alone. So you know, they make me pull up my video on the projector. I'm sitting like, "Oh God, what am I gonna show these guys? It's it's a bunch of college students, you know." It's a bunch of college, dude. They don't want to watch some guy run around and play Minecraft. So I finally settle on a video, and it's such an old video, too. It's from, like, 2015, but it's the best I can think of. It's the it's the ultimate Hunger Games. It was a special for my 500th Hunger Games episode, right? At the, I did this simulator, and even though, even though it was old, even years ago, I got some laughs. It, it wasn't... It wasn't the worst. Personally, I can't stand watching other people watch my videos. Like, sometimes my sister will be blasting my video from across the house, and I just die. So having the whole class watch my video was uh, certainly an experience. But, I mean, it wasn't all bad. Some of them subscribed. Let me tell you guys another story. This is a gripping tale of tribulation, redemption, and President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. So I was in this class called Big Data and basically went over all the ways civilizations throughout history have created, stored, and transmitted data. And we had to give a presentation in groups of three. This is another presentation story, by the way. We had to give a presentation on some some communication method. And we picked the radio. Later that night, it's like 9 p.m. I just got done binge reading The Princess Bride. Pretty good book, I have to say. Would recommend. And I go to check my phone. So I'm like, oh, you know, 9 p.m. This is a normal time to start assignments, and you know, if you knew me, you, you would be proud of me for starting my homework by 9 p.m., all right? That is good. So, you know, it's 9 p.m., ready to start. I check my phone, and I see a text from my classmates, and one of them says, Oh, finish the project, and I'm like, huh? Huh? They just, they just done the whole thing without me. And I was sitting there in shock as I realized what I had become. I would become the guy that freeloads off of his classmates in group projects. No! No, this can't be! What has college done to me? And you know, in, in my head I'm justifying it like, well, I mean, it, it's a pretty small assignment. It's literally like 10 minutes of work. I mean, it's three slides with a total like five sentences from Wikipedia and two images. But I know, I know in my heart that's just an excuse, man. That That's the dark side calling to me. I can't just become a freeloader, man. I can't accept this. So the next day I'm thinking to myself, how can I redeem myself, man? How can I come back from this? And I think, oh, well, there's, we still have to give a presentation on the slides. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give the greatest presentation ever known. Oh, free kill. Don't mind if I do. You can die now. That was not a pearl. Heh. <laughs> So the next day my brain is going into absolute overdrive as I try to think of a way to give the greatest presentation on radio the world has ever seen, alright? But the problem is I did not get enough sleep that morning. I did not get nearly enough sleep. I got two hours. For reference, it took me three attempts to put on my shirt that morning. It was not looking good for Technoblade. I couldn't give up. I had to keep thinking. I brainstormed throughout breakfast, on the bus, on the way to class, and right before class started, I had my eureka moment. I knew how I was going to handle this. I was going to cite, as a historical example on the usage of radio, the Fireside Chats by Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and it was going to be so perfect. It was going to be so perfect because one of our teachers, one of our professors, was also from the history department in U.S., specializing in U.S. history. It was going to be so beautiful. He's probably never had someone of their free, of their free own volition mention the Fireside Chats. He's probably going to be, it's probably going to be the happiest day of his life. He's going to accept me as a disciple on the spot, all right? It was going to be legendary, but the problem is this guy's be hopping. Bruh. Watchdog, please. Please just ban him. Please. Watchdog. Yes, he's stuck. The karma. <laughs> so I finally had it. Fireside chats. We got this, but there's only one problem, all right? There's only one problem. There's another group also presenting on the radio. I, there, there wasn't supposed to be overlapping groups, but, you know, it's it's a big classroom. We didn't see them on the other side of the room. So we didn't see them write radio, and, you know, it's a one-day assignment, so the professors don't actually care that much. The other group gets called up to present first, and I'm sitting here like, don't you guys dare. Don't you dare bring up the fireside chats. <laughs> don't you dare. And I, I stare them down as they give their presentation. And their presentation sucks, all right? Our presentation was going to be so much better. They don't mention the fireside chats once, and the presentation is over, and we're good. We're good. 
and right as I think victory is finally within my grasp, I hear the professor say, ah, oh, that was that was a very good presentation, you guys. Uh, another great example of the use of radio in history is uh, by Franklin Delano Roosevelt's fireside chats, and I fall to my knees and go, no! Okay, I wasn't that dramatic, but I was mad. I was so mad. Are you kidding me? The professor stole my ex bra. How was I supposed to compete with him? Obviously, I couldn't bring up the fireside chats after he already said it. I'd look like I was copying him. I ended up saying, oh, well, uh, a good thing about the radio is it allowed people to transmit uh, music audio. It just wasn't the same. It just wasn't as good. We, we got full credit on it, but, but my day was ruined. My day was ruined. I don't know what the lesson is to get from that story. It's just, life isn't fair, man. Please just fall off. I, I, have, I have to upload this video. Please, please just die so I can upload. Yes! We win these. That was another episode of Skywars, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the college stories. And once you're done buying my U2s, you should click on this end screen. This is the video I showed the class. This is the this is the one, the, the Ultimate Hunger Games Simulator. Pretty good. It's from 2015, so you know this is this is very young baby Techno Blade, but I I, I think it holds up to the test of time.